Hi, I'm Marianne. I'm going to talk about our short paper where I want to predict the evolution of brain anatomy over time and show preliminary results. Imagine that for every subject in the population, you're given a baseline brain MRI scan and subject specific information like their age, their sex, their Alzheimer diagnosis, the results of some cognitive tests and genetic information. With that, we want to predict what the follow-up brain MRI scan is going to look like at some later time. Why would you want to do that? Well, brain anatomy is a very rich indicator of a person's health. Knowing it in advance could guide clinical treatment and give new scientific insight. To tackle this problem, we model the evolution of the brain using a deformation field. Basically, the follow-up scan is given by the baseline scan warped by some deformation field that we want to predict. We model this deformation field as a function of the subject baseline scan, the subject specific attributes, and the time difference between the follow-up scan and the baseline scan. We use a convolutional neural network to estimate this function that outputs the deformation field. To evaluate this method, we conduct various experiments on the ANI dataset, which provides all the information that we need. We use dice score as an evaluation metric. We look at performances over our entire test set, but also in particular at performances for the subjects that experience large ventricular changes. We compare our model to three other potential solutions. First, we use the no change baseline, where there is basically no difference between the baseline scan and the follow-up scan. Then we employ the mean solution, where we assume that the brain of a specific subject will evolve in the same way as the average evolution of all the subjects in our training set. Finally, we compare our model to the oracle, or upper bound, where the deformation field is the output of a registration algorithm, which is given as input both the baseline scan and the follow-up scan, which our model does not have access to. The oracle tells us the best that we can possibly do. We consider different variants of our model. They simply differ by what the information they are given as input. First, we look at the model that predicts the deformation field when only given the age of the subject. We can already see that it improves upon the two other solutions that we propose for ventricles. When given the baseline scan, the model performs even better. Finally, the last variant has access to all the subject information, meaning that it uses the baseline scan and all the available attributes. This variant performs better than the two previous ones. We also looked at performances over all the brain structures we had access to. In this case, we can still see improvement over the comparative methods, but they are less pronounced as they are averaged out over the structures. In these charts, we noticed high variance in dice scores. To understand why, we looked at subject-specific performances. In this graph, some subjects experience very large ventricular changes, while others don't. In other cases, our model variant that has access to all the subject-specific information mostly improves upon the no-change solution. These differences can partly account for the large standard deviation observed. To conclude, we explored this very exciting new model to predict brain anatomical changes over time. We showed in preliminary results that this model is capable of leveraging external subject-specific information to improve performances. Since January, we obtained improved results and we are very excited to show them to you soon. In the meantime, I'm happy to answer any question you might have at the poster session. You can find our paper at the following link. Thank you.